when you're dealing with uncertainties, you need to make sure all your raw data has the initial uncertainty. So for my current here, I'm going to click in that cell, and I'm going to type at the top and add the uncertainty. Open bracket. I'm going to insert a symbol of the plus minus. Now that's using the normal text, which is default, right at the top here of the list. Click insert, close, and this is plus or minus 0.2, close bracket, hit enter. For my heat energy, the uncertainty has to be done the same way. Manually type it in, insert, symbol, plus or minus, and this was one joule, close bracket, okay, just one, close bracket, enter. And now all my raw data is ready to go. Now because I'm working with uncertainties, I am going to create a new table of data for the linear graph. In this column, I have already calculated all the current square values based on this current. I've added a new column here, which will have the uncertainty. Here, I've just copied the means for the heat, and in this column, I'm going to be calculating all of the half ranges. Just notice that these don't quite neatly fit in, so you can just drag the cells apart slightly and make sure that everything is nice and clear. Now here I've already filled in all my uncertainty calculations. I did these on paper and I've just manually typed them in. You can add formulae to calculate them in Excel, but that will take a much longer video to, to teach you. This is a video about how to draw the uncertainties on the graph, not how to calculate them. Well, I've generated my linear graph and I've changed all my points to crosses. Now let's see if we can add the error bars. Click on the graph. Click the plus icon and look at the error bars label. Expand that. We're going to go to more options. Now it automatically tries to add, add some bars. These are completely irrelevant to our graph. I don't know where it gets those from, but we're going to change those. Notice it's already saying vertical error bar. We're going to change the vertical errors because of course that's heat for our graph. We're going to go custom error amount and we're going to specify the value. Now it's got positive and negative values. It doesn't matter which one you fill in first, they're both going to be the same number. So in here, delete that. The positive error value for heat is this. Press enter. Here, it's going to plot negatively by, this, by an amount. We want the same amount going backwards. Press enter. Click OK. Close that down. And if you click outside the graph, you can just see error bars have been plotted vertically now. On the scale, it's not possible to go below 70. 5 and 8 just aren't showing. Now let's check out these current squared error bars. Click the graph, click the plus, and go back to error bars. Expand that. More options. Now where it says error bar options, we're going to choose the X error bars. And now it says horizontal. Again, we want custom. We're going to tell it the values. Delete what's in that first box. And now the positive values are here, press enter, click in here, delete that information. The negative values are the same, just going backwards, hit enter, click OK. When you X out of there, you will see, whoopsie, you will see that the error bars have been drawn. And as we go up, the error bars get bigger and bigger and bigger for the uh, Y axis. Right, my graph's ready for printing. I've given all my major and minor vertical and horizontal lines, labeled all my axes, given it a title, put my name on it. I've placed the relationship on the page. What's missing is the error bar, and we're going to manually draw this. So we're going to go clicking on the graph, insert. Now my one shows some icons here, but if you click that, you will see all these shapes appear. You want the plain line. Now put your mouse down and just draw a line. You can always change it later. There it is, that's my error bar. Now I can format that, I can change the line thickness, I can change the color, um, and I can add a text box to label it, but that's up to you. This is now a graph that's ready to be printed. Just make sure the error line is clearly labeled, and you'll need to manually calculate that by hand by reading off your own graph.